name is Caroline Collier and I work for Bright, a software development company based in Brighton. And today I'm going to talk about being agile in your approach to your career, uh, which I hope will be helpful. I'd like to start off by saying um, my apologies if this isn't the slickest of presentations. I think we're all learning new skills and adapting to these new circumstances. Um, but I think what was most important to me is that we as a company and me as an individual overcome the obstacles um, and continued to do this talk to support White Sussex with this event, especially this year. So hopefully the talk will be helpful. So I thought it might be useful to talk about a wide variety of career paths that are open to people in the digital sector and about how taking an agile approach to your career can help you to get the most out of those opportunities. Um, most people are familiar with the more well-known roles and the growth opportunities that they can offer. But there's a huge variety of different roles, some of which may not be so familiar, especially to people who are not currently in the sector. So, I'm aiming to use our experience at Bright to give some examples of non-traditional career paths and how our people have got the chance to take those options up and hopefully that can give some hints and ideas for how you can prepare yourself and explore what's out there, be agile and find the career path that's right for you. Just to give a bit of background though um, to Bright and what we do, Bright is a software de development company uh, that's based in Brighton. We've been around for around 20 years now and we are the company behind Asset Bank, Brand Hub and Dash, uh, which are based around digital asset management software. So we design this software for a huge variety of different clients in different sectors and our aim is to produce software that helps our clients to work more creatively and also productively as well. We've currently got around 20, uh, 40 people, I should say, working for us. And our aim with career development is help to help people on their way with their careers and to help them to develop their career in the way that they want to, that also supports the business, but supports a wide, diverse variety of different career paths as well. And the key to that is recognizing that not everybody's career progression is going to take a linear route. So what do we mean by traditional career paths? Uh, I've picked two different examples here. So from a traditional programming point of view, you might join the company as a junior developer, become a developer, then a senior developer, you might specialize in UX or backend or full stack development. And at the top range of the career, you might expect to move into a technical architect role or even a chief technical officer role. From a non-technical point of view, taking a customer support department, you might join as a customer support exec, become a customer success manager, or take a more technical customer support route, um, and then end up heading up, leading a customer success team. That might be a fairly standard route. These are brilliant options if you know exactly what you want from the beginning of your career, or you happen to get that perfect role when you first start out. So what's an agile career path? Well, agile is a bit of a buzzword uh, that people apply to everything these days and not just software development. If you think about it as having an agile mindset, then that makes more sense when applying it to career development. And the agile mindset is about experimenting, trying something new, seeking and welcoming feedback, adapting, not being constrained by having a fixed idea of how you're going to achieve your goals from the outset. Ultimately, it's really about creating that mindset that allows you to be open to all possibilities in terms of your career. Why is that important? Well, I guess it's important because what if you've never heard of that job that's perfect for you? Uh, I don't know of many 18 year olds, for example, that would have heard of the taxonomist or a metadata librarian, or even a scrum master role. Or even if they have, do they know what it really feels like to do that role, whether they'd enjoy it or how to gain the skills to do it. So some examples of non-linear career paths that people have taken at Bright might um, provide an insight into this. Uh, and I think one of the keys is you don't have to 
progress to lead a team, manage other people to be a success at work. It's not the only route. We're currently working on developing career paths and obviously a team leader role is one career path uh, objective, but also we're looking at things like domain or subject matter experts as well in order to explore that variety so people can move up in their careers, but not necessarily leading a team. Some examples of people's career paths, uh, just taking a couple of people that have worked for us. We took on a developer. Um, he'd been an intern with us for a couple of summers. And then he joined as a developer, progressed through the developer uh, scale, and then ended up develop, uh, actually heading up our custom, a custom software development team and also training as a scrum master as well. I'm quite a good example too, in that I joined Bright as an office manager. Then I took on a sales role selling Asset Bank, our digital asset management software product, before heading up our business support team. And now I'm full time in the head of people role. We've had people join as a developer, then take on a product owner role, a business admin joined us and then moved into a customer support role. And one of our account managers moved across teams and became a content marketing and communications manager. So lots of examples of varied career paths. So what was it about those individuals that made them able to take this route? Well, they were prepared to take a risk, I think, uh, weren't really afraid to mess up. They um, had good insights also into their own strengths and weaknesses, and they sought out and listened to feedback. They really learned from that feedback as well. Um, so they used that feedback to try and change their approach or even change their behavior too. So all of them had spent some time reflecting and thinking about what made them happy at work as well, and not just worrying about what they should do. So that was the, from, from the point of view of the individual, um, but the company also has a part to play as well, I think. Um, and that's really about these points that I've got on this slide, really. Um, we as a company need to be prepared to allow people to try out something new safely and accept that some of those trials won't work out. And one of the ways we've enabled this to happen is have some roles with tenures. So for example, people take on the role for six months, um, which allows feedback and opportunity to change direction um, and to move back into a different role if it didn't work out. Um, quite safely really. Obviously tenures don't work for all roles but they can allow some people to try out something new, get feedback and develop new skills as well. So we've had people take on different team leader positions, take on facilitator roles, coach roles, those are all some examples really. The company when, do, when taking this approach really needs to be good at giving honest feedback at the time when it's really needed so people get a chance to let, learn and develop their skills. You know, we as, as a company, as lots of companies really, don't, haven't got this perfect. It takes a lot of practice and a lot of constant effort, but we're working on it. Um, we're also trying not to think of people in terms of their job role or the current team they're on, but think, right, what are their skills? What do we need in the company? Where can they guess best contribute? So in terms of advice that I would give to people wanting to take, to take this sort of approach to their career, um, a really key thing, do a really good job of the role that you're currently in. Don't always be looking to the next role, but think about how you're getting the most out of what you're currently doing. This, I think, builds trust and respect and sets you up actually for people being willing to try you out in a different role. Know your own strengths and weaknesses. I think some people are inherently good at understanding what their strengths and weaknesses are. They've got a good insight, um, but everybody can benefit from a bit of more objective assessment as well. There are a lot of self-assessment tools out there. Um, find one that suits you uh, and the different things will suit different people um, or get a re recommendation from somebody who's also been taking this approach. Get feedback from other people ask for it, set up meetings, use a 360 degree feedback tool and do this regularly, get feedback about everything. And at a various different points in your career as well, we're all constantly developing, constantly improving and feedback really helps with that. 
So also think about what you enjoy as well. I think where you want to be in five years time is a good um, uh, idea to think about that and focus the mind um, on what really energizes you and what excites you, and what makes you really want to go to work each day. Seek out a mentor um, and a mentor can help develop particular skills and ex expertise. So choose somebody who's already got those skills um, and, and the experience that you admire or aspire to and learn from them. A coach can also be really useful. Once you've gathered that feedback, you've identified a couple of things that you think you want to work on that are going to help you. Then a coach can help you focus on developing those one or two skills um, and help you push forward in your career objectives. Looking for initiatives or projects that are going on in your company currently that you're interested in um, and ask to get involved. And if you can't find a suitable initiative or project, then suggest one, get it off the ground yourself. So yeah, I mean, those are the key pieces of advice really that I would recommend. Um, and I think if you're really interested in this approach, um, make sure when you're looking at companies and interviewing for companies, that they, like our company, embrace this approach to career development. So hopefully all of this has been useful and thank you very much for listening and all the best with your job search.